does this championship resonate with you as being a little bit extra special, being that it's for the city of Cleveland, for the state of Ohio where you grew up? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, just knowing what our, what our city has been through, what our people have been through as far as our sports and everything for the last 50 plus years. You can look back to the early final fumble, Elway going 99 yards, to Jose Mason not being able to close out the bottom of the ninth. So the Cavs went to the finals. I was on that team in 2007. I was getting swept, and then last year I was losing 4-2, and, and uh, so many more stories. And, and our fans, they ride or die, no matter what's been going on, no matter you know, the Browns, the Indians, uh, the Cavs, and so on, and all other sports teams, they continue to support, to support us. And um, for us to be able to, <laughs> for us to be able to end this, end this drought, uh, our fans deserve it. They deserve it, and uh, this, it was for them. David, I'm <clears throat> David Aldridge, Dan Siegel, Ron, I've asked you a couple of times about that, about the notion of what finally winning one would do for yourself and for the city of Cleveland, and also, and especially for Akron. And I just wonder, now that it's your accomplishment, you know, how is it? Is it relief? Is it excitement? Is it, what? Are, what are the emotions? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, David, you've been. Been harping on it a lot the last couple of weeks, and uh, you know, for me, I just I'm, I'm, I'm true to the game, and, and I know what I bring to the table. And uh, I came back for a reason. I came back to, to, to bring a championship to our city. Uh, I knew what I was capable of doing. I knew what I learned in the last couple of years that I was gone, and uh, I knew if I had to. When I came back, I knew I had the right ingredients and the right blueprint to help this franchise get back to uh, to a place that we've never been. And uh, Th that's what it was all about, David. I mean, um, you know, right now it's just excitement. You know, it's not even relief. It's just excitement for us as a team, as a franchise, as a city, as a community. Um, you know, to be able to continue to build up our city, uh, continue to be an uh, inspiration to our city, it, it means everything, and I'm happy to be a part of it. So, Brian, at 3-1, with them having two on their racket at home, what do you think turned the series around? Well, I, don't, I mean, for me, when I came up here after we lost game four, uh, you know, at home, I said, hey, listen, we've got to take one possession one game at a time, and we're going to Golden State, so you know, we got to fly home anyway, so why not have another game? You know, and, and I believed in that. And my guys believe in me as their leader. Um, every single day, I preach to them every single day. Um, I'm their leader, and uh, and they allow me to lead those, lead those guys every single night, and I was just true to that. I believed, and um, nobody else believed besides the, the other 14 guys and our coaching staff and our fans. Um, so you know, just, just going on and executing and putting things together and making plays, and we were able to do that. Mike, or Mike Wise on ESPN. LeBron, when you're sitting on the bench uh, before the game and the national anthem, you seem to be deep in thought. Did you? What was what was really going through your mind at that point? Uh, just zero in on what needs to be done to help us win. Uh, you know, Obviously, I put the, the effort into it, but you know, just thinking about the game, you know, thinking about the plays, understanding that they're going to make a run, they're a great team, understanding we're going to, we're going to make some mistakes, but you know, it's how we come back from it, how we move on to the next possession. And then also just some, just living in the moment. I told my guys before the game, listen, uh, there is a game to be played, but there's not many guys, there's not many teams that get an opportunity to be in the NBA Finals in a game seven. It's just not. Um, and, and this is my second one. And uh, I'm happy to say I've been victorious twice in, in Game 7. So, uh, you know, I just told you guys, don't take this for granted. Don't take it for granted. Uh, let's go out. And, you know, our coach staff gave us a great plan. And let's go on next week. You guys are losing tears there. J.R. Smith, it's a real genuine scene. What what, um, what what comes to your mind? All the people that were for you when you were young? What, what has happened? A little bit of everything. I think all the emotions, everything. I, obviously, I know what J.R. has been through. In his career, people calling him out and saying he's a he's this, he's that, not understanding. Uh, we can't have that, Mama. But Daddy, uh, but just understand what Jr. has been through, you know, and, and people just saying that you know there's no way he can he can be a winner. You know, we when our GM uh, came to us last year and said, hey, we got a we got a deal to uh, get uh, Timothy Miles Golf and get Iman Shumpert. And the Knicks are going to throw in Jr. I was like, "What? They're going to throw in Jr. to the deal?" And I was like, "Okay, I got him. I got him." And um, Jr. turned himself into not only a, a huge 
improved to our team, but he turned himself into a two-way player, both sides of the floor. And uh, I think those emotions came out of JR at the end of those games. Those emotions came out of me just leading 14 guys and understanding, uh, like I said, what our city's been through for the last 50 plus years since Jim Brown. And, uh, and then also just people just counting me out. You know, you know, throughout my 13 year career, I've done nothing but be true to the game, uh, give everything I got to the game, uh, put my heart, my, my blood, sweat, tears to the game, and people still want to doubt what I'm capable of doing. So um, that was uh, a little icing on the cake, you know, for myself to, to you know, just let me know that listen, everything I've done, uh, you know, they result in it. And if they all work, pays off, and that was, that's what happened tonight. Jeff, all the way in the back. With LeBron, Jeff Zilg at USA Today. But what is it about the athlete's mind or your mind that you don't feel that three-one is insurmountable, especially against this team? At and you got to win two here. And then the last three games, the, the fire that you maybe play, or were you fueled by anything that happened between you and Draymond and Clay's words to give you extra fire in these three games? Oh, well, I mean, at the end of the day, um, when you're down 3 1, uh, we got to come here. We got to come in here and win. Um, we had to win in this building anyway. I mean, we only get three games at home. So even if we sweep the home series in a seven game series, we got to win here anyway. So game five was a great opportunity for us to try to. Try to seize that, and we came up with a great game plan. Our coach staff gave us a great game plan, and we was able to send a game back home uh, down 3 2. And you know, we know our fans, our, our fans give us everything, and we was able to give it back to them. And you know, once we get to a game seven, uh, I take my chances versus anybody, versus any team. You give me one game, you give me 48 minutes, I take my chances. And uh, you know, once we got to a game seven, I was just confident, I knew what I was capable of doing. I mean, my guys will uh, allow me to lead them throughout the throughout 48 minutes, and, uh, and they did that. Uh, one of those guys is.